Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, there was a little mix up with the software here. Normally, normally I'm using uh, StreamYard for for my live events, and I set up a live event directly through YouTube. But I guess because of the fact I've been using StreamYard, it was asked him to connect to some streaming software, and uh, not sure how the heck that happened. So I know I had a bunch of people waiting over on the other one there, and uh, and they are just going to give a little bit to get over here. RV dogs in the house. Good to see you there, RV dog. Appreciate you showing up here. Um, as I was talking about, we just had a little glitch in the system. I guess I need to learn how to. Uh, to learn how to negate that little issue or navigate I should say but uh, anyway uh, good to be back here again this evening I'll tell you <laughs> having a hard time catching my breath there at work and uh, trying to you know get home here get everything together and make sure that I was on on time and then of course I had the little glitch there hello there JLS, love life. Good to see you here. Glad you made it. Hello, Donna. How you doing there, young lady? Hope the weather's doing well out there. I'm sure it's hot as Hades out there. But uh, it's pretty hot here as well. And I'll tell you what, I'm really excited that uh, I'm going to be going camping this weekend. Thursday night, and I actually took off Friday and Saturday. I'm actually going to go ahead and relax and do some things here. So, but uh, glad uh, that I'm going to get a little bit of a break here. But uh, good evening, Steve. Good to see you here, Marianne. Glad to see that you're here as well. Donna, yeah, I, I bet it is out there in Arizona. It has to be hot. So as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and do Ask the RV Pro this evening. So feel free to ask me any questions that may come up. And by the way, if you're watching this on replay and you have a, have a question, by all means, Go ahead and put that down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, not sure what uh, what my uh, Wi-Fi is going to be like this weekend, but we'll find out. We shall find out. That's for sure. But uh, you know, I'll tell you as I was mentioning, it's it's crazy busy at work between um, between customers coming in, appointments, phone calls, emails. And I'll tell you what, for those of you that may be reaching out to an RV dealer or any manufacturer or any any really business at this time, if you are, please be patient. I tell you, we are being overrun and it is frustrating from a standpoint of not being able to get back to people in a timely fashion. So see David Powers is in the house. And what's up? How you doing this evening? We'll be seeing you soon at the dealership. That is awesome, David. Look forward to that. I'm going to be off this Friday and Saturday, so keep that in mind. Uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me on Facebook, or you can even uh, reach out to me wherever on any of my social media, even here. If you're more than happy to give me my cell phone, and you can reach out. I believe that is down in my contact information, although I've had to pull over the information I had for below this video since I had to switch over to StreamYard to go ahead and make this event happen. So, but good to hear that, David. See Wayne Ger uh, Wayne Kern is in the house. I see Geek Family Adventures. Hey, by the way, I was loving the uh, the additions you did on your tag. That looked pretty cool, and love the fact that PJ was sitting in there. And by the way, for those of you that don't know who PJ is, uh, I took him from behind me here. Um, I'll be getting another Facebook page set up specifically for him because I lost my other one. Somebody hacked it. They loved it so much they went ahead and took it away from me. So we will uh, get that taken uh, taken uh, care of. So let's see what we've got here. We've got uh, weekend RVing in the house. How much is a mini? A mini what? Uh, that's a good question. You're talking about a micro mini or is there something? Are you talking about a mini Winnie? Motorhome, is there something in particular asking? Be more than happy to try to answer you for that. 
uh, well, let's hope let's hope they are, Marianne. I'll tell you, it, it's just uh, it is very frustrating. We close at seven o'clock. By the time you get done with customers, it might be seven fifteen. Then you've got to finish paperwork. So call some people back. Maybe throw out a few emails. You know, at what point do you stop? That is the problem. You, you, you say, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and make a list for the next day. Come in. And I'm going to hit it, but dang it, if you don't get hit with phone calls, emails, more people coming in. It's just one thing after another. So anyway, so PJ goes with us. That is awesome. I am so glad to hear that. And then let's see, Skinny Rogers. Just found out you recently, man, really, really digging the content. I got, okay. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you much. You know, I, I, I enjoy the teardrops. Of course, I like I like all all RVs. I, I enjoy what I do, and that's what I do. What I do, because it really isn't like work. It's uh, more fun. So appreciate that comment, and hope you're having a, a wonderful evening as well. Debbie, appreciate you joining us this evening here. And oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got you, Janice. Okay, now my wife's name is Maureen. She is the one that is actually. She is my um, moderator this evening. Oh, apparently she's not. Oh, you know, you gotta you gotta close out, go back into my hold on one second here. Let me pause here for a second. You need to go back out. You gotta go back in. Okay, so we're just a little glitch. I guess I'm not gonna have a, a moderator this evening. I guess because I switched, something's not working. So not a big deal. But anyway, so um, does anybody have a question? And I, I know that somebody asked about the Mini. Which Mini were you asking about? It was all uh, weekend RVing. You were asking about something for that. And let me see. Did I miss another question here? So let me take a look here. Yes, you do got to love those teardrops. That's for sure. Appreciate you giving me that thumbs up there. My phone typed what it wants sometimes. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. That's wonderful. So anyway, um, you know, I'll tell you, the, the RV industry, for those of you that might be needing supplies for your camper, I want you to understand that supplies are becoming very, very limited. Tell you, our our parts store is very um, bare at the time. Well, I see bare. We're we're missing a lot of items, and everything is back ordered and so forth. So, for those of you that are looking for stuff, um, understand that you could be waiting a while in order to get something. So, hope that helps there. Tell uh, Craig that I said hello as well. I appreciate that. Let's see who else I've missed in here. Kathy McGraw, appreciate you showing up here. Todd, glad you made it this evening. Hope everything's going well with you. And let's see here. That's awesome. I'll tell you, uh, Janice, you're going to love that the uh, new Camp 320S. That was supposed to be my camper for this season. But my wife is very happy I did not get it, but uh, it's uh, that is quite the camper, and they've made a lot of um, a lot of little change. Well, I would say a lot. They've made some changes. I've got a video coming out here moment uh, next, until within the next week, showing the twenty one. So do stay tuned for that. See Vince, Vincent Kennedy. He's looking to purchase first trailer, considering something like the Micro Mini or the Imagine XLS. Any other similar products I should look at? Well, I'll tell you, you know, I think one of those, one of those different plans, it, it, you know, it comes down to floor plan. I'll tell you, one of the Imagine XLSs I really like is the 20, if it's just for a couple, that is, is the 22 MLE. Because you've got a nice slide. The nice thing with that slide out is that even when it's in, you're able to use the whole camper. You have a walk around queen bed. You have two recliners looking directly at the TV for those of you who like to maybe watch the evening news or maybe a movie every now and again. You actually have a dinette table, good kitchen setup, and it's about 26 feet in length. So very nice setup. 
Um, the micro minis, they do have some nice units as well. It really just comes down to what's going to work best for you. So do your homework. Go in and look at them. Um, I, I, per, I personally believe that the brand design um, build is a little bit better in my own professional opinion. But uh, let me see what else I've missed here. Let's see what we got here. I, things are coming across qu pretty quickly here. Let me see what we got here. Let's talk pop-ups. Well, there you go, pop-up camper pro. Well, I tell you, you know, what would you like to know about pop-ups? You know, I tell you, you know, the pop-up market, when I started the business, I, we sold a ton of pop-ups. And, but because of the fact that pop-ups have become so darn expensive, the market has kind of shrunk on those. Because for the amount of money you're spending on these new pop-ups, if your vehicle can tow it, people are opting to get the travel trailers or even the hybrids, which gives you kind of, a, or expandables, whatever you might call them, kind of gives you a um, little bit of pop-up, meaning the, the bed ends or the canvas ends, but then you have all the amenities of a travel trailer. So, Debbie, are you going to get any more 34 foot in? Well, yes, we're going to get more in. Uh, which Is there a particular model you're looking for? We are getting more in. Here's the problem we're running into as far as getting new product in. We're getting about 20 units a week in. However, there's a really good chance that of those 20 coming in, 10 to 15 of those are already sold. So it's getting, it's very slim pickings as far as for what we have. And I'll tell you, it's just as easy for us to work numbers on a unit that we, maybe we have coming in or maybe that we have to order and put your name on it so that way there it's considered hot so it's going to get to the dealership quicker than one that's coming in for stock but let me know which when you're talking 34 foot which particular model you're talking about make model and so forth Wayne was wondering how the transcend color lines and received is it getting hot? yeah I'll tell you the transcend and when you're saying color line not sure what the color line you're meaning but to transcend it in the grand design scheme of things is a great option. I mean, they're using metal is thicker than most of the other manufacturers are using. The way that they build it, they're using the same, the same techniques that they're using on the imagined reflection and so forth. So it's a little bit more money than your um, entry level travel trailers, but you're getting a lot more for that that you can't see. It's a hard thing to see, but you know, if, if you go to someone's lot and they show it to you properly, You'll be able to pick up on that. Let's see here. Can you get a builder's list for a tab 400 boondock? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you'll reach out to me, I, I'm going to, again, when I'm done with this video and actually it uploads, it'll be a while, but you can go one of my other ones. I actually have my email address in there. Feel free to reach out to me with an email and I can email that information back to you. Uh, then we can go ahead and converse over the phone and figure out what's going to work best for you. And your solo is a perfect view. Yes. Well, that's, well, I'll tell you, you know, the Tab 320s are great even for couples. I mean, there's couples out there that are actually using the Tab 320s and living at them, from what I've seen. So I'll tell you, it's, and it's a quality build as well. Haley family, good evening. Appreciate you uh, joining us. What's the RV dog saying hello to everybody? I'm trying to see if I have any. Anybody else that I've missed here? Let's see what we've got here is Wayne, they should have read Explore. Oh, Explore. Yeah, the Explore, specifically 245RL. 245RL, that's a different floor plan. And, you know, they have those in a couple of different ones. And if it's a floor plan I'm thinking about, that's not a favorite of mine. I don't really care to have a sofa across the back uh, or recliners which is right next to the sink. Uh, to me, that just doesn't work, in my opinion, for me. I know it works for some people, but, you know, again, but a quality bill. Let's see what I've got here. Roberto, glad you made it in. Buddy from Florida. Todd, do a, Todd, appreciate that super chat there. Do appreciate that. 
that uh, that will be put to good use. So I do appreciate that. And uh, by the way, I'm going to be going camping this weekend up in Gettysburg. For anybody that might be up that way, be sure to reach out to me. I'll let you know where I'm going to be. So maybe we can hook up, maybe have a drink, sit around a campfire. Maybe I might not even do a fire as hot as it's going to be out there. But now, um, let me see. I'm coming down, seeing what other questions are coming up here. RV Dog is saying that pop-ups are hard, to, hard, a lot of work. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. Some of these clipper pop-ups, I tell you what, they, they made a great invention. I'm not too keen on the electric uh, lift systems because there's a lot that can go wrong with that. But I love what Clipper, Coach with Clippers came along with. And up in the front is where you're putting the pop-up up. And they've made it so that you can put the adapter that you use for your um, stabilizers. You can put that in there and put your put your pop-up up up and down. So it's basically like having an electric lift. So that could be a lot of fun. And I'll tell you, I think the reason why a lot of people go with a pop-up is from the standpoint that's the only thing they tow. Uh, maybe they want to put it in their garage as well. So different things, and that's why they have so many different uh, places, two different things. So let's see, Debbie, the Forza, 34 Forza. I'm sure that we have more coming in. Uh, feel free to reach out to me, and what I can do is I can let you know. I can look that up and see the availability and the time frame for when we'd be having one coming in. So let's see. Wayne said they had a Coleman pop up for 12 years and loved it. I'll tell you, people that have pop ups, I knew it. there was a couple that retired. This was back, I want to say, 2005. They retired, bought a pop up, traveled around the country for two years, put 50,000 miles on the pop up in their, their truck, and then wrote a book. Now, in the meantime, what they were doing that, what they were doing is they were assisting. Uh, dealerships at RV shows selling people on the pop-ups and then they traded the pop-up and got a travel trailer and then I lost um, lost track of where they are at these points but uh, you know pop-ups could be a lot of fun by the way the Coleman pop-ups are are no longer uh, I know there's there's a brand out there that puts the Coleman name on their campers it is not the Coleman of, of yesteryear uh, the pop-up that is more like the Coleman or Fleetwood pop-up of yesteryear is from Columbia Northwest. The Somerset pop-ups, they're using the same construction techniques. Uh, I think they've improved upon the roof. The roof is much better than what they did it under Fleetwood and uh, Coleman brand, but it's a quality, quality. Uh, let's see what we got here. What is most heavy duty grand design trailer? Well, heavy duty, not sure what you're asking there. If you would maybe expound upon that, I could tell you that if you're, are you talking weight or are you talking from a cargo carrying capacity? What are you talking? I just think that regardless of whether you're looking at the Transcend line, the, uh, the Imagine XLS, the regular Imagine or the Reflection travel trailers, um, I believe that you're getting something that's built well and you're going to enjoy it for years to come. No better company out there that stands behind the product than Grand Design. That's my professional opinion. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Listen, everybody has an opinion, right? So I'm just giving you mine. It may not be the same as other people out there, but I just give you my opinion. So hopefully that helps. Um, didn't know channel live. Oh, well, yeah, it, I started this a few months ago back when this pandemic uh, started and decided to uh, – continue it on a weekly basis. And by the way, do stay tuned because I've got, I'm still in the works for Make-A-Wish. We're going to be interviewing the CEO for Make-A-Wish Mid-Atlantic. And by the way, I'll have the link below this video when I'm done, just getting ready to send them another donation. I'm going to be sending donations to them on a monthly basis. I've got another family coming in to pick up another camper uh, next week. It's a great cause. And I can tell you what, it's, I think that that is probably the best thing that Make-A-Wish can do for a family because it, it's not a one and done. It gives the family the opportunity to get out there and make memories that are going to last a lifetime, however long that lifetime may be. So it's a 
great thing that they're doing and they'd appreciate your help as well. So, let's see. Yes, I do. Re I think I recall you telling me about that. And then whatever happened to Sunnybrook campers? I think with, with Sunnybrook campers, those were another nice camper that was built. They were quality built. They were one of the first ones that I saw that actually built. Most campers are what we call stick and pin, meaning the rippled sides on the outside. They'll use two by two, so, so use wood for the framing. Sunnybrook came out. Well, I think maybe Citation might have done the same thing, but uh, uh, they had aluminum framing with the aluminum exterior. And I think what happened was some of these companies that actually built better quality campers went by the wayside back there in 2009 because of that. Uh, you know, it was more expensive and it was hard to compete in the price scale. People were just looking to buy cheap campers, didn't understand the quality that was built there. And there's a few others that are out there as well. So no doubt about that. I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel that way. Let's see here. I'm trying to go through my, my questions here. Yeah, so the RV shows, if you remember last week, I mentioned how um, the RV show for Hershey has been canceled. So that one's canceled. I am not sure if the Maryland RV show is still on for September, but stay tuned. Once I have more word on that, I will let you know. Uh, and as far as for individual states and so forth, just check with the, the region or your state RV Association, you just look them up typically online and they'll be able to tell you that. So you're referring to the ones that carry a lot and no cost. Now you say you saw only two that didn't have extenders, unfortunately. What extenders are you talking about on that? I can tell you that, yeah, those are one in the same, very similar floor plans. Uh, obviously, the, the reflection, I mean, you're talking about there's about a fifteen to $20,000 difference between those two brands. They're both grand design. That would really come down to budget uh, for you. It would be my recommendation. I believe that they're both built uh, robust, and I believe from a quality standpoint, you'd be happy with either one if you decided to pull the, uh, the trigger for either one of those there. So that would be my recommendation. Recommendation. Maureen, have I, did I miss something? Okay, good deal. Yeah, I'm going to be, you know, I, I need some help here, ladies and gentlemen. I, I need to get it to where Maureen will sit next to me and she'll be able to read me the questions so that I don't have to be looking down at the questions here. Um, it'll be a little bit help, uh, be a little bit more, uh, I guess, streamlined on StreamYard. So, but, uh, you know, I'm the shy one. Maureen's more of the extrovert. And uh, for that reason, she decides to stay off in the shadows, I guess. Um, no doubt. I'll tell you, that that's what happens, you know. But, you know, the funny thing is about pop-ups. I had an older couple come in. Uh, he was 78. She was 75. And they just bought their fifth pop-up that they've had. And that's what they love is the pop-up. Uh, so a lot, a lot of uh, great things to say about pop-ups. I mean, hey, 78 still loving it, right? I hope the heck I'm, I hope the heck I am that uh, energetic and that healthy when I'm 78. That's all I could say. So, but, well, I appreciate that, Janice. Thank you very much. And yes, yes, George, yes, I am the shy one. I'm very soft-spoken and uh, people at work do know me for that, for sure. So, Anyway, so any other questions? Like I said, I, I try to make these informative, try to make them short, sweet, to the point. And uh, anybody else have any questions about this? So, Michelle, yeah, well, we'll have to work on that too. No doubt. So, but anyway, do, listen, I do appreciate you uh, joining us here this evening. I've got a lot of videos I'm going to be doing this weekend while I'm camping. So that's kind of like my relaxed time. 
I can actually relax and do some videos. So I'll be putting some of those up um, next week. And uh, be uh, looking forward to getting those up and seeing what kind of input, seeing if they're helpful for you guys. Because I've got a lot of good ones that I'm going to be putting up. Well, I say they're good, but we'll see. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I meant the slides in the RVs like the imaginative ones. Well, yeah, if you don't need um, bunk, bunk beds, I mean, they have other, they do have other um, floor plans without the bunks. Um, some good stuff there. So I appreciate that, Kathy. Thank you very much. Yes, and I will be heading out. Yes, we, we will be. I'll tell you, we're going to have fun stuff. You know, I plan on doing some videos on how to utilize the uh, Blackstone Griddle as well. So I'm looking forward to that for those of you that might like to eat and cook that well. Steve, uh, yeah, RV sales, they're good through the roof. They really are. You know, uh, just kind of give you an idea. You know, the best year that we, well, best, best sales month that we've ever had in 40 years was 197 units. And that was a June of 2018. So May of this year, we hit 247. And then June, we hit 251. And I'm not sure where we're going to end up this month. I think we have about 100 units out already. And it's just about the middle of the month. So I believe we're going to hit over 200 units again this month. Um, but it is going going very, very, it's crazy. Uh, you know, our quota is 12 this month. I'm sitting at 25. So I'm extremely busy and looking forward to this weekend and relaxing. <laughs> That's for sure. But and then get back at it again because that gives me two more weeks to go ahead and finish the month out strong and then get ready for the month of August. Yes, yeah, so we'll be seeing you on Thursday. And then, of course, I understand you're going camping. You'll be just right, right around the corner from me in the same campground. So we'll make sure that you're hooked up right and everything's going well and you have a great weekend, that's for sure. So looking forward to that. Thank you very much. I do plan on having a great trip. No problem. Like I say, I'm here. And if, if you come up with another question, I mean, just put it down in the comments, uh, you know, in the next day or two or whatever. Uh, reach out to me. Be more than happy to try and uh, answer any of your questions. Which is better, wood frame or aluminum framed travel trailers? Well, here, you know, you ask different people different things. I can tell you a benefit of having what I call stick and tin trailers is the fact that you don't have to worry about delamination. If you have a laminated trailer, it doesn't matter whether it's aluminum frame or wood frame, there is a chance that you could have delamination. But one thing I do provide for my customers is the ability, I give them the necessary information so they have less of a chance to have that as an issue. So, well, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, you, they have a 17, we have, we're bringing actually a 22 inch. Um, and uh, we have a 36 at the house. And of course, my daughter bought her own 17. So, but, uh, and she does love cooking on them. It's kind of nice that I can come home and she can just sit out there and just she can do the cooking for us. That's really nice. They, they are, you know, I was talking to somebody just the other day about campgrounds and they were talking about how people that have land, how people are starting to open them more to campers. And for those of you that might be trying to get out camping, but you're having a hard time getting into campgrounds, take a look at Harvest Host. You know, I know you're not going to have hookups and so forth, but a great opportunity for you maybe to get out and at least um, use, you know, use a camper anyway. Anticipate any manufacturers adopting a new Ford Transit all-wheel drive platform. Well, I'm sure it'll come out. It's just a matter of when. Right now we have... Um, we have the Mercedes four-wheel drive being used on a few different, um, from a diff few different manufacturers. I'm sure it's just a matter of time before they'll get the Ford Transit doing that as well. Wayne loves his uh, Blackstone, like new things that cook on it. You need to make sure that they season it right. No doubt about that. I tell you, there's a lot of great videos out there on how to use it, how to clean it, and do all that good stuff. So listen, I do appreciate everybody coming in here this evening. Oh, my wife's over here pointing at me. 
somebody somebody's going to be asking me another question here before we start. So I have to, what's that, Maureen? Has anyone has anyone does a hard harvest? Well, the har there we go. The harvest hosts, those are typically people that have farms, people that have breweries, people that have wineries, things of that nature. And so you're you're boondocking in their on their land. But I can tell you what, you can get some really nice scenery. But you've got to be prepared prepared for that. You know, if you're if it's really really hot out, you don't have a generator, and you're not supposed to be running your generators at those places anyway. So it's more of a uh, place that you're going to go, open windows, let the breeze come through. So that might be more beneficial to those that are up, maybe up north, uh, or people, you know, as the fall comes into into play, when the weather's a little bit more cooperative, maybe a little nicer out, because then really you only need your 12 volt for light. But then you go out do some sightseeing. You're going to sit out during the day, but yeah, you spend a night or two there. It could be pretty fun. So. So well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And again, thank you everybody for showing up here this evening. Looking forward to get back at it tomorrow. And I will be back next Tuesday night, eight o'clock. If there's a particular subject that you'd like me to cover, by all means, reach out to me. And I'll be more than happy to um, go ahead and try to make that happen. I see I had another question here. Let's see if I pay cash for in full for an RV, the advantage of asking for a lower price. Well, I can tell you right now, um, like anything, I, I tell people, with us anyway, there's no difference whether you're paying cash or whether you're financing. I can tell you there are dealerships out there. If you're paying cash, you're paying more. They charge you addition, an additional fee just for that. Um, so my thing is, uh, if you're of credit worthiness, want to negotiate your best price when they're in uh, do a loan through them and you know then pay it off like six six months to a year you're only gonna pay the interest for that that period of time but then let your money work for you because you know, if you have your money invested properly and your you know your credit is you have really good credit your interest rates are gonna be lower than what the money you're than the interest you're earning on your money so hopefully that helps you there so, yes, they are. So there we go. Well, the, I, I guess it just depends on the, on Wayne. Depends on the um, the harvest host itself. And I would just tell you that I have not stayed with any of them. I, I've just heard people staying with them, and I'm not sure if it's just one night or if you're able to extend it to two. The biggest thing you want to do if you're using a harvest host, if it's like a brewery or a winery or something like that, make sure that you patronize the business. Don't just go in there and park and then go take off and go somewhere. Hang out and enjoy it there. So thank you, Donna. Appreciate you showing up. Hope everything's going well for you. By the way, Donna, did you find your Class B motorhome? I know you were looking for that Trapado. Have you found it yet? we go ladies and gentlemen appreciate it again donna i will catch up i'm sure i'll catch up with that your answer here momentarily but thanks again everybody go on out there have a great evening enjoy it and remember life's short get out there and camp and make memories that are going to last a lifetime so thanks again you'll have a great evening